what little I know about Lori. She likes portraits of saints lit from above, heads tilted up toward the light, palms lifted, hands empty. Lori's great-grandmother was always old, always gray, stern about religion, never danced, never cussed, never understood why in the world people were never nice, or at least polite. Teenage Lori was parking lot popular. She stood outside the schoolyard gate, stayed as far away from those desks as possible. She looked stoned even when she wasn't, because maybe she was. I didn't know babies would change her until she was holding twins, one on each arm, and suddenly Lori was different. She swore she'd keep them innocent. She did what she could to show them nice things and keep the world away from our door. If Lori sees a hummingbird at the feeder in our garden, she assumes that bird is her mother, her grandmother, or her great-grandmother dropping by the house for a visit. Lori has a candle altar with little statues and flower petals. If you move away, she will never let you go. She will text you and call you and pray for you. Lori is always planning a vacation, or at least the next event. When she has a moment alone with her thoughts, her thoughts are packing bags, and she's wondering what she's going to wear. <laughs> Lori has dreams about the end of the world every night. There's pestilence and earthquakes, giant ocean waves sweeping children into the water, people lifting their hands, looking up, praying. Everyone is running, filling the streets, searching for some higher ground. <laughs>